Welcome to another episode of Ask Professor V. And in this week's episode, I'll be answering questions that were sent in from Alexander, who's in New York. And here are his questions. First one, have you ever tutored mathematics before becoming a professor? So yes, actually, I started tutoring when I was about 14 years old. So I was in honors math at that point in my high school. And my teacher passed around a list for us to put our name and phone number on if we were interested in being tutors, because a lot of the times other students who were struggling, their parents would call the school and ask for tutor recommendations. So since I was in honors, then I was a candidate to be a tutor. And I just decided to set my own price at that point. So I would tutor whatever math class was one level below what I was currently taking. I never tutored the exact same class I was taking um, at the time. And I did that throughout high school. And in fact, my tutoring business became really successful, especially through word of mouth. So a lot of the times my clients, the students who I would tutor would improve their grade in math quite significantly. And then their parents would tell other friends of theirs. And so I got up to a point where when I was a senior in high school, I tutored anywhere from like six to 10 students a week, sometimes multiple times a week in all levels because I had finished calculus at that point. So that was about as high as I was tutoring. And then when I started college, I wasn't initially a math major in case you didn't know, but I still kept tutoring in math on the side because it was just excellent money. It was flexible. I could work it around my schedule. So I always tutored for myself. I didn't work for a tutoring agency. And as I became more experienced and more confident, then I did increase my prices and it, it was great. It, really gave me the exposure and the practice explaining mathematics, especially to a variety of different students with different learning styles that made me, I think, extra adaptable as a professor now. I can really read the room and I can see if my class isn't digging my explanation, I'll switch it up. And you definitely have to do that when you're tutoring somebody one-on-one, you know? Um, So do you have any advice for helping people out with advanced math? You said you currently tutor basic high school math courses, but you want to start tutoring college level math. So just start slow. If it helps you, then just ask the student you're going to tutor what topic they're going to be covering with you in your tutoring session and you can prepare ahead of time. You know, that's unpaid time. But if that helps you become more confident, you can also ask them what homework exercises their instructor assigned or for a copy of their review Uh, exercises if that's what they're going to be going over during their tutoring session and you prepare ahead of time. I mean, that's what I always do too when I show up to class. So I've always done all the homework that I assign my students, but before I come in to class and I know we're going to go over homework depending on the class, I'll sometimes look it over, solve a few again, just to make sure I'm sharp. So you can do the same thing for a tutoring session. And then with time with practice, then you won't need to review so much, but in the beginning, that'll help give you the confidence that you're prepared for that session. So it does take time outside unpaid, but it's good. It'll build your skills. Okay, next question. How would you describe your experience taking real analysis? I hear it's a challenging class, which I'll take this fall. So I'd like to know what you have thought about it. So I had a really rough time taking real analysis. It was one of the most difficult courses I took. And part of that was because I switched to becoming a math major partway through college. I was originally just an economics major. So I went through over a year of courses and that's when I realized I didn't really love econ, but I didn't want to waste all that time and coursework that I had completed. So I ended up adding math as a second major, but my undergraduate degree, my bachelor's degree in mathematics is with emphasis in economics. So I think it would have benefited me more if I had just been a pure math major or if I had just given myself an extra year to take classes that would have prepped me better for real analysis. So what kind of things am I talking about? If I had just taken introduction to proofwriting, maybe some set theory, topology, other things that weren't so econ or statistics based. So I had a lot of statistics, econ classes, econometrics classes, and those didn't translate or prepare me well for real analysis. So I would just say, if you know that you're going to be pure math major or you're prepping for real analysis, take as much coursework that preps you for proofwriting. 
and be really patient with yourself. Read the textbook extensively and see if you can establish a good study group too because it's one of the most challenging courses, series of courses. I had to take a whole year of real analysis in undergraduate school and then another year again when I was in graduate school. It didn't get better. It never got better. <laughs> okay. Have I ever word, said the word series before and my phone thought you were calling for assistance from Siri? Yes, all the time. I have to remember to turn her off when I'm teaching Calc 2 because she just always wants to get all up in the mix when we're going over that whole unit. The class laughs. I yell at her. Um, but yeah, I, I always have to remember to deactivate it. It happens to me all the time. Out of curiosity, have you ever thought of doing series of the day compilation just like your integrals of the day videos? It's so funny you say that. I actually have. I just wasn't sure if there would be as much interest in it, but I feel like whoever watches Integral of the Day probably has gone through Calc 2, so then they should be the same audience who would enjoy Series of the Day. I've thought about trying it, so if you're not the only one <laughs> who's thought about that, if other people are interested, let me know and I'll start it as well. I don't know if there's quite as many to work with. I'll have to really dig around and try to find some, but we can just start going through the textbook. And it'll also get interesting if we just test for convergence, divergence versus if we want to test for absolute or conditional, that can make it interesting too. So you guys let me know. I actually really like that idea. All right, next question. Do you have a favorite topic from calculus? I asked one of my old teachers recently and he liked doing volumes of revolutions. I had to think long and hard about this. I don't know, I, I can't pick one particular topic. I think there's units that I really enjoy. I love teaching integration techniques and not one in particular. I like once we finish learning all of them in the class and I'm trying to help my students pick the right technique for a problem, which shouldn't surprise you. I really love making integral of the day videos. And also I really enjoy this is going to sound weird, related rates. I think they're super fun, but it, it took me a while to get there. When I was a student, I certainly didn't feel this way. All right. And then do you have a favorite function to find the derivative of? Mine would most likely be e to the x. e to the x is the best. There's such a funny meme about e to the x too. I'll, I'll post it on my Instagram. Um, I love taking the derivative of e to the x. Also sine x, cosine x, and I may be crazy, I love using the quotient rule. So if there's some sort of rational function or just anything that requires the quotient rule, I do enjoy applying it to find the derivative. So thank you so much for your questions, Alexander. These were great, loved answering them. And I just wanna say I, I enjoy making these videos. So if you guys want another episode of Ask Professor V, then just send in your questions. You can email me Math with Professor V at gmail.com. I have another one in the works already that I'm putting together. I got another email. And also, in case you guys didn't realize, I have merch now. <laughs> so it's Professor V's Math Police. That's the first type of merch line that we have. There's t shirts, sweatshirts, water bottles, hats, backpacks, a whole bunch of stuff. And it's a logo that was designed by one of my students last semester. So thank you so much. And if you guys watch my videos, which most of you do, you'll know I'll say, a lot of the time. Be careful, the math police are gonna come get you. So it's it's basically me as a lady cop in a cop car coming to get you if you forget the plus C or the DX or any of that stuff. So feel free to shop the merch, support my store and my channel. And thank you guys so much. Again, if you need help reviewing your integration techniques or any of the topics that I listed earlier, then you can check out the playlists where all my videos are organized by topic, by course on my channel, and also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. Bye guys.